Hello and welcome back to the Paleocast Gaming Network. My name is Dave Marshall and I'm a professional paleontologist. So on this channel, we get pro paleontologists to review as many games as possible that feature fossil organisms or evolutionary processes, whether they be serious simulations, huge entertainment titles, or in this instance, something rather silly. So today I'm going to be playing Bite at the Museum, which is a game freely available to download on Steam. Museums. The place where old farts called historians to teach others about worthless events. Ouch. They could be teaching about me. A literal sentient time machine. How's the visitors supposed to learn about the glorious piece of machinery that is Tim? History is a bunch of old foey, like pigeons or the stock market. What do so pigeons do? Asking, what do you do when you're surrounded by nothing but trash, don't have the opposable thumbs to take it out? You bring someone else in to do it for you. Right. That's an amazing logo, by the way. So, um... I think the idea is that we are supposed to run around and destroy as much as possible as requested by Tim, the sentient time machine. Uh, so we've got the destructometer at the top, which I think destructometer would have sounded so much better. Like it's a thermometer, it's not a thermometer. But anyway, uh, so we are a T-Rex, we run around and we destroy stuff so so yeah we're this goofy looking t-rex which is fine and uh we start off in this glass case that we've got to break out of i actually want to go around and actually have a look at the I went flying. Have a look at the museum without destroying too much. So we're Tony the T-Rex and T-Rex is uh, not in the proper format. Uh, it should be capital T, full stop, space, small r uh, on T-Rex. Uh, man with butterfly tattoo suspected of art theft. The night of the funeral changes everything for Tony the T-Rex, a 60 year old police officer from Glasgow. What? One moment he is discussing potions with his courageous friend Barry Walker, the next watching with horror as stingy ogres frighten each other. He knows these ogres came from Sydney, but he can't prove it, at least not without some scary aardvarks. The considerate, adorable man knows that his quiet life is over, he acquires, acquires some scary aard... Right, um... That's really weird, and I'm stuck on the floor. It's a free game, so maybe all the uh, exhibits of the, you know, like got the same text. So yeah, purple castle. Oh, it was a purple castle. Lovely art. So it's not necessarily a, a natural history museum bit of art as well and there's uh yeah some memes all over the walls it'd be nice if we could zoom in and actually see them but so there's the time machine that's tim then i'm guessing uh which is the time machine from uh hg wells's the time machine from the 60s i think it is <sighs> The drizzle that rained like hopping rabbits. It was a place where he... Well, this is just probably going to be nonsense. If you want to read it, pause it. This T-Rex is strong. So we can pick things up. Can I let them go, though? Okay, so I think we might just have to play the entire game with this on our faces. Unless I can knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> the 
<laughs> it's so broken. Right, we're gonna have to start this again and get this off our faces because it looks stupid. I'm not playing the whole game with this stuck on my face. Like, why are they... Do you reckon they made all of these uh, models themselves? Or do you reckon they just got them off a shelf? There's Anubis. Right, okay, I've just teleported somewhere. Exhibit's closed. We're going in anyway. Gonna have a look at some of these memes. Don't know what that is on the wall. Maybe a light. Spinosaurus meme? Oh, knocked it off. Right, uh, so on here we have some plants and jars. Some trees. Yeah, let's just destroy all this. Brilliant. We'll destroy it all as we go. It'd be nice if they actually had, like, some actual descriptions of what everything was. Right, so we got fossils. I mean, here there's... Right. Coral, maybe? Limestone. Pots. Good job, Josephine. Nice one, Blue. Jurassic fist bump. Never mind. Dino comics. What was T-Rex's favorite number? Eight. Oh, God. What do you call... Right, that's enough for jokes. Could you pass the meat? Does it look like a can? Yeah, very good. Uh, so this is a volcano? And are these prehistoric plants? I mean, I guess maybe some ferns. Oh, it had lava in it. And it's just shot me across the room, okay. Right, some tiny little volcanoes. Okay, the geology exhibit is just completely gone now. Right, be care careful of the eggs. What do you think about the theory that chicken ev chickens evolved from dinosaurs? Sounds plausible. Where's this music come from all of a sudden? Tyranno, quick copy. Tell your friends uh, you saw us. Brilliant. Sorry for the wait, ma'am. We're a little short-handed. Right. Carnotaurus says tiny arms are immobile and permanently pointing behind its body so that it's eternally doing the Naruto run, making it the perfect dinosaur to bring to Area 51. Oh, is that all of uh, Mark Witten's pictures for if you um, shrink wrap modern animals in the same way that people do with dinosaurs, this is what they would look like. And those swans are terrifying. A baboon too. That whole penguin long neck thing just got me thinking, you know. Right, so we've destroyed all of the eggs. These... I don't think are dinosaur eggs. They tend to be a lot more elongated and... I mean, the modern dinosaur eggs, probably. Right, get this stuff out of the way. Right, well, we lost that. Next exhibit. Some minerals floating around. Uh, knives? I hope someone actually spent the time to draw this. Just bespoke for this game. Is that the Mona Lisa? So there's some creepy T-posed family. 500 BC voted nicest place to live in the world, Egypt. Oil on canvas. Is that like an old picture of what people used to think Ammonites were? Some kind of like little... looks like an armadillo face. Anyway, the invertebrate display. So, I'm guessing that this on the right-hand side is Arthropleura, the world's biggest... Oh, the world's biggest arthropod known 
Possibly, maybe. At least it's the world's biggest terrestrial arthropod. Doesn't have a shadow. Ah, the lighting isn't good enough to see. But it is for this. There's a giant scorpion. Brilliant. That's not too bad of a scorpion. What's this, a crab? Interesting choices. And then maybe something on crab ontogeny, like how it grows up, how it... Oh, well, we lost. I didn't realize that we had a time limit. Right, let's rush back through to where we once were. In fact, it would make more sense if I just cut to that. Here we go. Yes, so crabs. Maybe crab ontogeny, showing how they develop from little to large. The same with what I'm guessing are brachiopods. Although they seem to have eyes right in the centre. I know, I think that uh, bivalves have eyes in their shells. Um, just kind of like photosensitive single lens eyes, uh, which is really interesting that they have them and that they are more common in nature than, you know, just like the squishy eyes that we all think about when we talk about eyes. And these would be brachiopods because they have the line of symmetry going straight through the uh, the middle of... No, it goes... cuts through the shells. So if I stand the other side of it... Okay, well, I've just lost the brachiopod. Come here. Right, I'll put that down. We'll come back to the Eurypterid. We'll come back to the snail. Just get this brachiopod with good light in. Come here. All right, never mind. We've got a uh, Eurypterid with good lighting. As a Eurypterid worker, that's awful, but uh, I appreciate the effort that went into it. Uh, it's a pterygotid, or at least it's trying to be. Uh, it's got the nice uh, pinchy appendages at the front, the chelicerae, that's good. The tail is pretty nice, the post-abdomen. Uh, the legs are completely awful and it's got no segments, but hey, the general shape of it, top marks. Well done for knowing what that was and including it. Uh, huge scorpion as well. We did used to have huge scorpions running around, uh, something like Brontoscorpio or Pulmonoscorpio pretty huge, not too far off uh, this size, assuming that my T-Rex is the size of a human. Uh, giant orthocones. Uh, this is not too bad. Honestly, like, I'm impressed with this. Uh, so, I think it's probably copied off some paleo art or something, but uh, interesting hypothesis is that uh, these giant orthocones swam around vertically and they would have uh, been like a hot air balloon going up and down in the water column. So if you filled the shell up uh, slowly with um, gas, then it would rise up in the water column and it would have not a huge amount of resistance doing that because it had a pointy shell. And then with gravity, uh, it would fall back down and then collect whatever food along the way. So, uh, yeah, that's a really interesting hypothesis because a lot of the time you see them uh, being reconstructed as something that swam around horizontally. Um, so it would always be swimming around backwards, which they did anyway. Uh, but then how would you feed in that instance? So I, I, I like that idea of them being hot air balloons and they could like rock it up into the uh, into the water column pretty easily with their jet propulsion. So, uh, what's it called? I've forgotten the name of it. Arthroplora, that's the one. You can tell I work on fossil arthropods. Uh, it is now probably the largest uh, animal 
well, arthropod that ever lived on land and possibly in the world with a new discovery that's just been uh, published. Uh, this is a centipede, though. This isn't a millipede. Arthropleura is a millipede. And you can tell, like, based on the antennae and also the number of legs relative to every segment. So you can see here that every segment has got one pair of legs. And in modern millipedes, every segment has two pairs of legs. And centipedes, yeah. Centipedes, one pair of legs per segment. Millipede, two pairs of legs per segment. But then Arthropleura was kind of in between. It didn't have complete diplopody, it's called. Uh, so, yeah, it, it should have had more legs than that. But all in all, it's a centipede that we're looking at. And that's a huge, hugely common misconception in paleo art. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, Meganeura as well. Probably a bit too big, but uh, great to see this giant uh, dragonfly from the Carboniferous. Same time that uh, Arthropleura would have been about. Watch out for the orthocone. I really like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that with me. It looks like a giant carrot now. I want to read this baryonyx. Oh, it's stuck on my face. There we go. Its name means heavy claw. Baryonyx was a very cool carnivore of the. Uh, I'm not even controlling this. Of the early Cretaceous, it is said this animal hunted much like grizzly uh, bears today, I'm guessing, waiting in rivers and swooping up fish with its big claws and teeth. It's an interesting uh, paleoecological hypothesis. Okay, some very boring looking cheap Dinosaur, T Rexy skeletons. Warning, do not sit here. What happens if I do? 